Welcome back to the Golly Young Men Podcast. This is episode 87. Man, getting closer and closer to yep. 100 it is, it is crazy. We are uh, in the middle of fall, in the middle of football season. Just the greatest time of year, in, in my opinion. I think I talked about this last year uh, when we were recording. Um, maybe it was last year. I don't remember for sure. But about how I used to be a summer is the best holiday, or best it's a holiday, best season yep. type of guy. And I have since grown up and matured. Summer is not the best. <laughs> summer is really, really great. And I love summer. Fall's the best. Fall's the best. Fall is just the Fall's best. The, the, best. The, the clothes you get to wear, the the jackets, the the pretty colors outside, the just the cooler, crisp mm. weather, and then of course football season. It's just the best. I oh love yeah, it. the soups. The as dumb as it sounds, the decorations of just you yeah. walk in and it's an explosion of orange and you know burnt orange and reds and and browns and yellows and you know Thanksgiving's coming up and it's leading to the holidays and the leaves are changing outside. If you don't live in the South, you can't possibly understand how beautiful it is down here like we had the aspens in colorado that was like september time you know we go up hunting uh do muzzle loading in september and it was gorgeous and you get the aspens changing it's a different animal down here man you you drive down the streets with all of the trees hanging over the the street and they're all changing to these vibrant colors it is one of the most beautiful things obviously boston and, and maine and all those areas like that's gorgeous as well, but there's just something about Tennessee yeah. that uh, I've people never really appreciated. I agree with that. People love the pumpkin spice too. I, I do not, but no. I tell you, <laughs> Starbucks had an apple cream, apple crisp cream latte. Or oh something. yeah, no, no, no. Good that's that's those, my go-to. Those, those right? apple oh, drinks, yeah. apple are, crisp are macchiato, quite good. But we digress. We're two minutes in, and we're talking <laughs> talking about Starbucks drinks. Um, episode eighty-seven. We are talking. Speaking of wasted, wasting time. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's perfect. We're talking about structuring your day. Don't with, waste time. With this episode, Don't we're gonna get time. really big about this episode is gonna be really big about not wasting time, and we just wasted the first two minutes of the of the episode. No, sometimes it's important. Exactly, we'll exactly. Get to there that. is time for it. No, but this is a this is a really big deal to to both Joe and I, and this is something that I think if if you godly young men can at least be thinking about at an early age and, and kind oh, yeah. of be moving towards, you will be set up so well um, in your life. Just the structuring your day, probably the most important concept that I've learned since becoming an adult is the concept of intentionality. And Joe, if you'll give me a minute, I'm going to go into this and then go I'd love it. to get go your thoughts. It, yeah. But the idea of intentionality with, if you don't have, if you're not intentional with certain things, it's going to lead to waste. We had a money episode a few months ago now. And it's not, point's not original to me, but I've always believed if you don't have a plan for your money, if you're not intentional with your money, your money will get spent and it will get spent on things that are probably a waste. Um, if you're not intentional with your walk with God, with your time with God, it's probably not going to happen. You're going to end up with a lot of wasted opportunities. Um, and for a lot of people, it obviously depends on your line of work. If you are not intentional with the way you spend your work hours, specifically if you're a white collar person who maybe more creative content or whatever it is, if you're not intentional with those hours, you could get through an eight, nine hour work day and be like, I did like two hours worth of productive work. A lot of wasted time. A lot of a lot of waste due to lack of intentionality, and and so it's my it's our proposal that maybe there's no better example of this idea of intentionality versus waste than with our time. If we're yeah. not intentional with our time, we're going to end up wasting it. And so that's that's the idea for this episode. And so we're going to talk about how do we structure our day to where we maybe minimize the waste of time that we have. Yeah, I like you said minimize. We want to optimize. That really is what this outline is about. Yeah. Is we're optimizing, and and you will find this is a lifelong pursuit to optimize your day. I'm very much working on this, and not every day is great. I'm going to start that off, uh, start that off by saying, you don't accomplish this every single day. Not every day is optimized. The goal is to continue to optimize to get to the point where you're living a life that is streamlined. You got really good rhythms, habits. You're intentional. That's why I like Will. You put a fantastic outline together. Intentionality is the beginning of all of this. Of any optimization you're going to do, you have to be intentional. Like you could throw on health. If, oh, if you're not that's intentional, a great one, yeah. if you're not intentional. It's like, oh man, six Oreos later, boy, it's been 15 minutes and, and 15 I just, pounds later, like, man, yeah, yeah. that's exactly <laughs> it. Like, and you know, I just ate half a bag of chips. If you're not intentional with putting those things away and choosing something else, but I love how you really brought it, the the focus in on time because time is the biggest wasted thing. You get to, how many of us get to the end of the day and it's like. Where'd the time go? What did I do today? What did I do today? <laughs> what what did I actually accomplish? Like, what did I get done? And a lot of times we get to the end, and I hate to say it, not a lot. You know, like, boy, I was so absent-minded the entire time, and I wasted so much time. Twitter, uh, Facebook, probably not for the uh, godly young man. It may be Instagram. It may be Snapchat. It may be TikTok, TikTok, TikTok obviously, is a is time one. killer. 
TikTok or uh, YouTube major time suck. Yeah. So when you're looking at those things constantly, you just find that you go into this haze and like three hours pass and you go, well, what happened? You know, what, uh, what did I accomplish? Nothing. You wasted your time. Well, there's two sides to this. The, those who are on the younger end of our listening, maybe you're in high school still, homeschooled, whatever, or maybe you're in, in college years with classes that don't take up a ton of time. You do have homework and stuff, but I, th- I think your schooling years, even if you do have some kind of job, you do tend to have a lot of, a lot of time, a lot of free time. And the, so if that, if that, if you fall into that category, focus on that kind of the time outside of school, the time outside of work. And then similarly, even if somebody has a full-time 40 hour week job, maybe we've got some, some people in their twenties and thirties who watch and listen to this full-time 40 hour week job that still leaves a hundred and what is it? 28 hours throughout your week that you can use for various things. And I think a lot of people can, you know, they put their time in at work and then that's about all they accomplish for the day. Yep. And they're, they're done. They're maxed out. And again, you look back at your day and it's like, yeah, I went to work, but what else did I do today? Productive? Mm-hmm. Not a lot. And we're going to get into a discussion here in just a minute on, do we have to always be productive? Cause that is a, I'm really looking forward to that discussion here in just a few minutes. But so that's what we're getting at here is even if you're like, okay, I've got my eight hours of work today. Most people are still up for another eight to 10 hours um, beyond that. And so structuring your day ar- around that. And so as Joe said, a lot of people look and there, there's a lot of things that they want to get done. There's so many things that we want to get done. We can even look at the next day before we go to bed and be like, okay, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this done. I'm definitely going to get up and work out for sure. I'm, I'm going to exercise and work out tomorrow. Um, us golly, man, I'm going to do my Bible study and spend yep. some time with God. Um, I got some errands to run. I've maybe got some projects I'm working on. I've got to get that homework done for college or for, for my for high school. I've got to write that paper, whatever it is. I've got these hobbies. I really want to go hit some golf balls at the range. Like whatever it is, we've got so many things that we want to do. And Joe, I'll speak for myself when I was younger um, and, you know, feel like I'm getting better at it now, but maybe there's some days like this where I look back and it's like, I got half of what I wanted to get yep. done or maybe even less because we wasted our time. That That's really the inspiration for this episode. Oh, absolutely. While you were talking about it, it hit me. I'm trying to remember what book was from the important versus the urgent, uh, maybe it was mm. power habit or something like that. Um, understanding the important things versus the urgent things. We can spend our entire day doing urgent things that we never really do get to the important things. And the to-do list can be a mile long, but we do burn out at a certain certain point and the other thing is if this is where we want to get into i suppose the next part but like if every part is optimized you're not leaving any room for like in this sometimes wasted space is okay um but man we have so many things that we want to get done that yeah it's going to take intentionality and it's going to take a structured day from start to finish i'm a big believer in morning routines i think we were did we do one we did we did conquer your mornings this is a long time ago yeah refresh but yeah yeah, we're big believers in you got to get up, you got to conquer your morning. It's going to set the tone of the day because we do have so many things to get to. Well, Sometimes it's great to not vacation, things like that. But most of the time, everything will just laid out of the things we want to get to. That is what's helping us be better godly young men. Yes. So we want to make time for those things. It doesn't happen without intentionality, without looking to optimize, without being just focused on your day. Because again, we can go into this haze where it's a lack of focus. It's a lack of discipline. And it's really a lack of staying present. We're so focused on the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, or what we've done in the past. We fail to just stay present and say, can I, can I yeah. get this done right now? And then move on and then move on and then move on. Well, adding structure and intentionality to your day. I, I know there's probably some people listening that might be like, well, man, that's, that's just not me. I'm not a planner. I'm more a fly by the seat of my pants type of person that's okay. You'll just be far less productive than those people. Like I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be rude or, or insensitive or anything like that. But like those people are like, ah, planning is for, is for losers. You're just going to be less productive most right. of the time. If you don't structure your day, if you don't structure your time, those that do tend to, it tends to work out better. You may have bouts of productivity where it's like in a day, you just were a wall. It's like a roller coaster, like bam. And then down. Yeah, exactly. Here, and and then, it's yeah. like, whoa, see, I'm just as productive. Not over the course of a month, a year. You know what I yeah. mean? Like the structure is what takes you your highs might be high but or higher but your lows are probably lower you're not waiting for motivation to hit every single second and this is why structuring your day there's a, a an idea of rhythm replaces strength when you are in rhythms and you are structuring your day and you know what's what's going to help or what's coming next that is going to replace those bouts of motivation the person who's not structured is waiting for that motivation to hit at the peak the roller coaster is like woo, we're really high and then the motivation drops to the floor and you'll go a week and accomplish nothing. If you're waiting for the roller coaster of motivation, you're going to get, I'm just going to tell you right now, you're going to to have a wasted life 
where very few things get done that you want to get done because you're just waiting for that next bout of motivation, uh, dopamine, whatever it is. Be structured. Recognize that there's beauty in the structure. There's beauty in monotony. There's beauty in rhythm. I've always been one that's kind of eschewed and kind of pushed aside the idea of monotony and structure and everything else. It's like, I love being spontaneous. I love just going out to eat or I love just, you know, planning a vacation, whatever it is. The more, the older I get, the more I really start to regret this part of my personality, which kind of gets in the next part, but regret that part of my personality of like, yeah, but you live today. I have four kids. I can't just pick up and go to Europe right. like that was happening <laughs> anyway. But you know what I mean? Like, so you want to be structured because that is so important leading into your adult life where you're not just waiting for the the fun moments, living weekend to weekend, waiting for motivation. Let's talk about that. Let's let's get into to that discussion because this is once again what we're going what we're going to share in a second is just kind of general tips when it comes to structuring yep. your day. And and again, the main line that we want you to remember from this episode is that a lack of structure or a lack of intentionality is going to lead to wasted time. And yep. for us as godly young men, specifically thirty and below, or obviously into our thirties as well. We've got so much energy. We've got so, it's our prime working years. We've got so much going for us. You know, man, that's the time we don't want to waste. That's yeah. the time that we shouldn't waste. But Joe, right. I want to ask this question. <laughs> it's gonna hit home for both of us here. Is there value in waste in, in some wasted time? And by that I mean I'm gonna ask it maybe a few different ways. Do you always have to be productive? You and I are very productive mindset type of people. I think guys in general typically tend more so to be obsessed with production. Um, every, I've got to optimize. You said it earlier. I've got to optimize all my time every single minute. I've got to make sure that I'm getting stuff done, that I'm productive. When can you take time to enjoy yourself? So again, kind of three different ways to ask that question, but essentially like what is the balance between constantly looking for being productive versus I'm going to sit and enjoy myself and there's not going to be a single productive thing that is done over the next two hours and that's okay. How, how do we get to that point? Do you want logical Joe to answer the question or emotional? I would Joe love both. I would love question. to hear both. <laughs> logical Joe says, do you always have to be productive? No, no, it makes sense. I mean, I, I get it. You have to rest. Emotional Joe, the the lower parts deep down say, absolutely you do. That's where worth and value come from. Um, we've talked about this. Yeah. We were talking about this before. To to let everybody in on, uh, you know, that, that's watching, my family has, we're real big on productivity. Um, my dad owned his own business, worked his butt off. I mean, when we were young, um, 80 to 100 hour weeks, he was on call, literally 24 7, he was on call um, as a plumber. And then he worked his way into his own business, owned his own business, and, and worked his way up and went into more of the white collar side and wasn't on call and had a lot of employees and such. And so he worked his way out of it, but he was a, I would say, a workaholic. Love my dad to death, but I think that's it. He has passed that down to me. We find worth, we find value in always being productive. So it is a very difficult thing to sit there and to enjoy a night where you are literally doing nothing. When I'm looking at my to-do list, and if on my notes I have lots on my to-do list, things that are, are really big, some of them are really big, some of them are really small, my to-do list usually hovers around 20 things to do every single week. Um, beyond your regular work. Beyond, right? Yeah, I mean beyond, like that doesn't the include clients, like clients yeah. and things like that are yeah. not on there, podcasts not on there. Like I have other things, some are small, Probably 12 to 15 of them are like bigger things. So a lot of them don't get done. Well, guess what's on my mind at night when I'm sitting there like, oh, man, I did not get that done. I could still be doing this. I could still be doing that. Um, and you're thinking of every minute that I'm sitting here watching this movie that's right. is another minute that I am not getting my to-do list done. So that's why I say the emotional Joe is like, I got more to do. I got more to do. I just need to do this because that's what makes me valuable. That's what makes me worthy. And I know this. Doesn't mean that it's easy <laughs> to, to change. Put it I can therapize myself, but yeah, it doesn't make it easy to yeah. do. So, I think you're you are better at this than I am. I will I will I'm still freely not admit it. that you are better than this. But I do think you struggle to a certain degree yeah. as well because both of us, yes, we are looking to optimize, and it's difficult. So, what you end up doing, then I'll pass it back over. What you end up doing is, and it's called like nighttime revenge or whatever, like you are kind of taking revenge back from the daytime Joe that was a workaholic. And at nighttime you end up like, okay, now's my time to finally relax. I got everything done. It's 11 PM. <laughs> you're finally sitting down and your brain is fried enough where you give yourself the ability to watch a show. Well, you watch until midnight and guess what? I got to get up at five for the gym. So it's five hours of sleep. This is my life. A lot of the time yeah. it's horrible, yeah. but because I'm working until 10 PM, you know, on all of these different things, trying to squeeze in family time, trying to do family nights, you know, dinner nights. But then after that, a lot of times there's more things to do. I'm on the laptop. 
This is a real problem for me. You do not always have to be productive. As a matter of fact, I think it's, was it Bezos or, or uh, Elon Musk? I think it's Jeff Bezos. Like He gets up, a uh, guy who owns Amazon, right? Um, CEO of Amazon, gets up every morning, and he's got like time to just pedal around, do nothing. He gives himself that time in the morning to read the paper, sip his coffee, enjoy the morning a little bit. Like That's beautiful. We it's a little need easier that. when you're 100 billion. Well, exactly. Like, <laughs> like I'm sure that's what he was doing when he started Amazon, saying that yeah, Elon Musk exactly, sleeping yeah. on his office floor. Like... Those guys, it's it's a but lot easier point, when you get yeah. that. But he has noticed, like the older you get, guys slow down. We go, ah, oh, they've lost it. No, maybe in some ways they've realized the importance of a yeah. wasted moment where well, it's okay. A word on this discussion, and then we're gonna get into the tips. Sure. I don't think you always have to be productive because I think if somebody, let's say Joe and I were just really really good at this, and we spent every minute, every every hour, I mean, minutes dramatic, but every single hour we were finding ways to be productive. What would that look like after a month? Right. We would be burnt out. We would right. be exhausted. Our family, not to mention the the family time that the time that we're supposed to be spending with our wife and with our kids and leading them, if we're constantly obsessed with with being work productive or even like exercise that's productive as well, I would kind of group, group that in there. Our family is going to struggle, and just mentally, we're going to burn out. It, it it is inevitable that you're going to burn out if you're constantly obsessed with that, and so that's why we're going to talk about this in the tips. I think it is it is reasonable, healthy, and a good thing to work into your day structure, work into your week planning, time for relaxation, time for family time, time for spending time with friends. Um, Even video games, believe it or not. Whatever (laughs) hobbies you might have, yeah, I mean, obviously, if 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 you're blocking off six to eight hours a week for video games, eh, it might be a little bit much, but the point is, and I'm, I'm treading on the ground we're about to get to, I think it's perfectly reasonable to be very productivity minded and, and be very uh, conscious of that as long as you are making sure that you are not just every single hour I've got to get something productive done. Because, real quick, I'm so no, sorry. You're good, you're good. Spending time with your family at night, that is productive. That is productive. Even if you're not making a dollar or getting your to-do list done, the time that I get to spend outside, and again, I'm talking to the fathers and husbands here, I guess, for, for those who are not, just bear with us. The time that I get to spend with my son outside when I've been at work all day and he's been waiting for me to come home and I finally get home and he's like, Dad, can we go outside? I'm sorry. That's very productive. Even if in my mind it's like, oh my goodness, i got so many things to get done. Yep. You've got to look at that as that is a very productive thing. The time spent just talking to, to Rachel at the end of the day when I've been gone all day, that's productive. So that that would be kind of my answer is I think inevitably Joe and I are always going to be very productivity minded, but we have to tell ourselves – we need to kind of ramp it back every now and then. Well, we think that's a, a great thing, and it's like, wow, you know, I could pat myself on the back and be proud of myself and think that I'm amazing because of all the stuff I get done. Yes and no. You know, there, yeah. there's some positive to that. There's a lot of negative to that as well as we're talking about where your family does get left in dust, things like that. The question I was going to ask, though, yeah. I want to put it back to you. Where is the balance in that? You mentioned the six to eight hours of video games. Somebody might look at that and be like, what's, yeah. what's, the, you know, what's the problem? Like, I got done what I, what I had on my to-do list, I got done. I look at that and go, you didn't have enough on your to-do list. Um, <laughs> if you've got eight hours, if you got eight hours to just kill on video games, but hey, maybe they do. Maybe maybe they feel productive. Is there a balance in that? Because I can just say, man, we're just going to push and push and push and load up the to-do list where you never have time, which is a big problem of mine. Um, and you just take on more and more, and it's really actually stupid. That's not me being productive and great. That's me being stupid and and not having appropriate boundaries. However, I want to get your thoughts on the other side of this, yeah. like. Sometimes we have so many boundaries where I can't, I'm sorry, I can't take that on. Like, you really need to. Somebody at church needs you to do something. Sorry, man, I can't take that. And you're going home and playing video games for two hours. Like, I think you could have, right? Yeah. You could have put that on the to-do list. Where do you find balance in that? That's a really, really good question. Um, I think a lot of this question has to do with where your priorities are. This is not really a priorities episode. But for most people, a number one priority is going to be work. Like you, you have to, you have to work. You have to make sure you you are doing your job. And so that's going to be number one. Um, family time generally. Um, then again, not always. Family time is not always number two, but it needs to be up there. Um, we're big believers that exercise and working out needs to be high up there. Um, and then you get into things. Obviously, I would say above that needs to be time with God, Bible study. And so, what you need to do is look at okay, how much how much time is left essentially. And I guess what I'm getting at is like, don't put video games on the calendar and on the schedule before you put your time with God and your exercise and the things that are more important. But I I think the balance comes in if I am filling out I fill out my Google Calendar basically by the hour every single week. 
And what I've found for me personally is if I am booking my entire week and I've got my my uh, work schedule in, I've got my, obviously we have our worship in church and I've got my Bible study in, I've got my exercise times in, I've got this project. If I get to the end of the week and I have got one to two hours left of any family time or any relaxation, any enjoyment, time with friends, golf, whatever. For me, I'm looking at that like I've got too much on my plate. Mm-hmm. I've, I've got too much. I'm overbooked. I am lead. It's going to lead to burnout versus I'm going to prioritize my work schedule. Obviously, I'm going to prioritize having a couple nights at home with with the family with no friends or whatever. I'm going to try to get together with some friends at least once or twice a week. I'm going to try to, I'm going to make sure I get my Bible studies on the on the schedule and all that. And then after that, I have no problem blocking off. The, for me, it's not video games, but for blocking this night off, I'm going to watch a football game or I'm going to watch a movie with Rachel or whatever it is. So I don't know if I'm answering your question, but I think the priorities for has to, you have to take that into account when you're talking about how do you balance. If, if again, if video games are one of the second or third thing that you put on your, your calendar, maybe you need to reshuffle. What, what would your answer be? I would ramp up slowly and I would actually enjoy more of those things as teenagers. You will get to the point where you have a wife and kids. You don't have time for that. Enjoy it when you're young. If you are yeah. if you are going, 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 and you're filling up your schedule with a bazillion and one obligations in high school, that is your time to be young and to just enjoy it. And that's stupid stuff all the time, but like, it's okay because you're going to have a wife and kids one day and you're going to have a lot of things pulling on your time. You're going to be more prominent in your church and they're going to be requiring more. Like these things just build, I'm, slowly ramp ahead. I was just going to say, I remember when I first got my own Netflix account, went through and I added all these shows to, to my, my, my <laughs> yep. list you have, right? Yep. Like, and I just oh, added, man. oh, I, that looks really good. I definitely add the, that list. I've maybe watched three shows on that entire yep. list since I was 17 oh, yeah. years old. And, but, but I would agree that when you, when you're younger and in college as well, especially if you don't have kids, if, if you're, if you're not married rather and don't have kids, I don't think there's a problem with, you know, I'm going to watch my show tonight or I'm going to, you know, whatever it is, so long as you don't overdo it. And even making some time, even when you're married and such, making some time for yourself is okay. Here's the last thing I'll say, and then I want to get into the tips here. When I say ramp up slowly, I would rather have actually at some points too little on your plate than too much. Slowly build that up. I have taken so much on my plate that I look at it and it's like, well, I'm not quitting the podcast. Away, yeah. I can't take this away. I'm not obviously not taking God and the preaching away. Like I'm that's my job and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not taking from clients. I can lessen clients, but then that's how I make money. And so I'm losing the money and, and yeah, money's not everything, but then what clients am I gonna cut? I've taken this much. I can't just discharge people. That's not okay. And then you know, you look at the other obligations in my life, uh, Nashville School of Preaching, I teach there. Well, I made a commitment, I'm not gonna, you know, dip out on that. Um Family, I can't get rid of that. Preaching, so, Bible class. Yeah, the Bible classes, the things that I'm prepping. So you look at all of this and you go, what can I cut? And to be quite honest with you, there's nothing I can cut. Or if there is, it would cost, if I quit podcasts, that would affect our relationship. And it affect your guys' work. And I got things pulling on me. You ramp up to the point yeah. where you go, I can't scale back. That's stupidity. Okay, and this is a, not to self-loathe preaching here. Preaching yourself. About, I'm <laughs> preaching myself. That's stupidity. Don't do that. I will be looking to scale back where possible. You have to set boundaries. And so this is a warning to the godly young men saying, ramp up slowly. Do not take so much on your plate and fill your life full of pillars that you can't possibly get rid of without everything crumbling. That's not smart. And you may think you're productive and you may think you rule the world because you've gotten all this done. It's really dumb, to be quite honest with you, if you've done that, because now the things that really do matter and sometimes having some time alone... And, and having times where you're not productive, that gets lost. So, yeah. word of caution. I very, I very much agree with that very, very quickly. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that. The only counterpoint that I would bring up is I think of it kind of similarly to if you really get used to having your wife work and having that mm. income, it's really, that it's really hard to give that up in the sense of if you're like, you know what, I'm going to keep my schedule really free so that I can get a lot of Netflix in and I can make sure that I have free time to go to go shopping and go do this or go golf twice a week or whatever it is. Maybe this is just me thinking it would be very hard for me to start adding stuff and taking away my enjoyment time, if yeah. that makes sense. That, and that's not to contradict what you're saying because I think there's elements of, of truth to both of those things. But as I'm just thinking through it, that would be something that would be like, Man, if I'm if I'm if I'm at a good spot and I'm really enjoying my my time off and my, it'd be kind of hard to, to to ramp up for me personally. But that's just a different perspective. I yeah, guess. I think that is a, a valuable perspective. And my whole point is, I think you can ramp up so fast that you can't ever ramp back down. I do feel which you is can where add, we're probably both at right now. Correct. Yeah. And I think 
but you're smart in the fact that you schedule in family time. Like this is a block. I try to do that. That can be difficult um, yeah. when you have clients calling 20 texts a day and people calling and everything else. Um, that cuts into family time. So it's just it's boundary setting is more than anything. So Joe, we talked about wasting time. We talked about kind of not being intentional. It's very funny that that this is where it's going to go. <laughs> We're 25 minutes in, and we've got seven tips on structuring your day that we still want to talk about. We're going to push it to next week. Yes, we I think I'm going to make yes, we We're going to make an executive decision right here. I think the discussion we just had about productivity um, as opposed to enjoying yourself and what is the balance is a very needed thing for a lot of young pe- or a lot of young men specifically and a lot of older men specifically. And so I'm good with making that kind of the thrust of this episode I need to. because yeah. I don't want to speed through these tips. We've there, there's a Correct. lot of things about structuring your day, and so the intro that we went through might be a little bit you know we kind of. We waste the time. That's okay. Well, yeah, not even. Good. I'm not even talking about that. Like we oh, told okay. you, we're gonna get to these tips, and the, the, oh, it's yeah, gonna yeah, be yeah, about yeah. structuring yeah. your day. And we didn't even talk a ton about that. More so about the productivity, but productivity versus enjoyment of, of our time, enjoyment of our day. I think is was an important discussion. So, any any final thoughts? We will be back next week where we will basically just dive right in. We have seven tips on how should you structure your day, what should that look like um, to optimize productivity, to minimize waste, but. Yeah, we'll talk a little yeah. bit more about this stuff next week. We didn't really bring in any any Bible. Ecclesiastes is all about this. Of he busied himself in a lot of ways, but you know he says he drink and be merry multiple times throughout the book. Like enjoy the fruits of your labor. Um, there are times to enjoy it, and so we didn't bring in any Bible. But the Bible does specifically speak to this of like yeah, there are times to just be still and know that I am God. We don't always have to be going, 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 going. Um, so I would encourage godly men. We're going to talk about that more in the next one of, of structuring our day. I think it's a good idea to push this to next week. Um, but yeah, that would be the biggest takeaway of this one is we optimize and talk a lot about being productive. Just make sure you're enjoying that time, but be intentional in that as well. Be intentional in your time off. Be intentional in, in spending time with your family, spending time with God. Intentionality is the key here, but we will be back next week talking more about these tips um, and, and wrapping up how we structure our day, but we will talk to you again next week.